Hello everybody, my name is Yusuf Ali. I am a manager here at Earth 360 as well as a SOC 2 practice leader. Welcome to the first part of the SOC 2 Explained series. Today we'll be going over Common Criteria 1.1, also known as CC 1.1. What we'll focus on is the actual objective or the criterion itself and the points of focus and some of the best practices, some of the challenges that companies face and some of the requirements that you'll need to, uh, to have in place in order to, to meet this mistress requirement. So first, just to cover, uh, CC 1.1 is a COSA principle one as well. So the entity demonstrates a commitment to integrity and ethical values. So there are several points of focus that the AICP has designated in order to prove this is functioning properly. So first is setting the tone at the top. So what is your management? What is your top level management doing to demonstrate their requirements for integrity and ethical values. What is their stance? What are their commitments? And how are they communicating that? So when I consider setting the tone at the top, this really comes to a direction of what documentation or what evidence do you have in place to, to show me that your, or your organization is setting the tone at the top? This is typically done through an employee handbook and kind of covers from top to bottom all the things that the top level management has considered important to their business, the functioning of their organization and supporting of the system of internal control. The next point is establishing standards of conduct. So this can typically be rolled into an employee handbook. Sometimes I see this as a standalone documentation, but this is really talking about the expectations and the, the the responsibilities for maintaining integrity and ethical values across the organization. The next point here is evaluates adherence to the standards of conduct. So processes are in place to evaluate the performance of individuals and teams against the entity's expected standards of conduct. So there's a couple of things to, to, to kind of nitpick out of this one here. Performance of individuals, what we look at here is probably an existence of performance reviews there is no requirement on the cadence on how often performance reviews are conducted, but I'd say recommendation or best practices is at least annually. You know, some organizations conduct those performance reviews a little more often. The content of those performance reviews really should base on your roles, responsibilities, and measure you up or measure your employees against those roles and responsibilities for accountability purposes as well as adherence to the standards that the company has established. There is a common criteria 1.2 below, which we'll go into another video, which also dives a little deeper into this. The next part I'd consider is evaluate of the point here, the point of focus here is evaluating adherence to standards of conduct. Really is, you know, is there a disciplinary process? Is there some sort of commitment in the, in the event that there is a failure to adhere to your standards of conduct. Again, this can be rolled up in your employee handbook. This can be standalone with your standards of conduct, or this can be a standalone documentation. But what I'd be looking for here is the existence of some sort of some sort of disciplinary action in the event that there is no adherence to or failure to adhere to the standards of conduct. Next point of focus is addressing deviations in a timely manner. So what is this? This is in, in layman's terms here, is there a reporting mechanism or is there something in place for your employees to identify failures of or report failures of adherence to the standards of conduct? This can be anonymized. This can be non-anonymized. Just depends on what it's placed. So typically I've seen this in the form of an intranet form in companies. This can also be a ticketing system that's rolled into a, that's forward over to the responsible owners of this. There's many ways to prove this, but really the main point that this is addressing or looking to address is if there are deviations of failures to adhere to or failures of adherence to the standards of conduct, what is the organization's process in place to remediate that and to remediate that in a timely manner? So typically I, I say form or ticketing system and having that forwarded over to someone for the reason that someone should be reviewing these early and often in the event that there is something significant that can return into a security incident later on that's being addressed. 
The last point here is considers contractors and vendor employees in demonstrating its commitments. So the best way I would explain this is really, what are your requirements for contractors? What are your requirements for vendor employees? Are they different than your full-time employees as part of the onboarding process? So we're looking at the set in the tone at the top here, um, and it says, excuse me, it's looking for established standard of conduct. And the last point here is understood at all levels of the entity and outsource service providers and business partners. To me, what that states is, are you getting them to acknowledge that these are the standards of conduct that you've put in place? The best way to demonstrate this is as part of your onboarding for a full-time employee or for a contractor, you've had them required, sign, acknowledge, and review the employee handbook, if you will, if that's what your organization has in place. Vendor employees may be a little different to demonstrate this, but how are you adhering to this? The best way I would explain, or I guess the best way I would have them do this is maybe in a customer services agreement. Maybe this is defined as part of their responsibilities. And then your responsibilities as well is defined. And any failures to adhere to this may be subject to termination of contract. Or failures to adhere to this can also roll into uh, reporting, similar that we mentioned earlier. So there's many ways to prove these points of focus. There's no one answer for this. And that's why we try to keep it a little high level as far as explaining this. As far as gotchas and maybe some 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 challenges I feel clients have, early early adoption of these best practices, early adoption of employee handbook, early adoption of a standards of conduct, I, I find that clients sometimes have a hard time relaying the message. And the best way to prove that these are in place and demonstrate the top level management's tone at the top, if you will, is by requiring that all employees acknowledge these documentation, whatever that documentation may be, as far as it's demonstrating that there are certain integrity and ethical values that the company has in place and relaying that message over to your, to your employees, contractors and vendor employees. That covers CC 1.1. Uh, I, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Be on the lookout for additional ones coming out for the remainder of the common criteria. Um, if you have any other questions or comments or concerns, uh, feel free to reach us at risk360.com. Chat to you all soon. See ya.